All right, so you've had about a week to play with your Arduino, and uh, hopefully you've experimented a bit. This is just a quick uh, introduction to the layout of the board that hopefully you've discovered along the way. And if you haven't found all these things, then hopefully this will help you move forward for week two. So you'll notice that the board has a series of ports on each side that you can plug things into. Uh, some of these are labeled A0 through A5. These are your analog uh, ports. This handles analog data. Uh, this is data that will be measured in voltages uh, within a range. And over here on the other side of the board you have your digital ports and they're labeled 0 through 13. And uh, these are basically on or off, ones or zeros. Uh, you'll also notice that you have a ground port right here. And then you also have two ground ports over here on this on the other side by the analogs. Um, you've got some constant power. You can uh, have 3.3 volts or 5 volt power with those two pins there. There are other pins here that, that we won't really need to worry about those. You have a reset button right there if you want to reset your board. Your USB uh, port you've already discovered it goes there. And then this is for external power, if you want to power the board externally. Now, there's something special about the digital ports over here. I mentioned that the analog ports uh, will measure a constant range of data uh, values uh, in, in terms of voltages. Um, that's great for th measuring things like the volume, you know, how much sound, the volume in a space, or how much light is in a space. Um, you can also use it to control how bright a light will be. Um, in terms of an output. Over here, the digital, and, and by the way, the analogs and the digitals, these can be inputs or outputs. We can be bringing data in from the environment into this space, or we can be sending a signal out uh, to turn something on uh, or turning on within a certain range. Now, on the digital side, you'll notice that some of them have a little squiggly mark in front of them, and those are special uh, that's the PWM, or Power Width Modulation. Uh, the uh, Arduino can actually turn its, uh, these, these analog, or, excuse me, these digital ports on or off really, really fast. And so this, these are uh, uh, ports that are able to handle extreme rates of turning on and off, so much so that they can basically uh, emulate an analog uh, input or output. So that's uh, kind of the layout of the board. And now we'll take a look at the breadboard. As you look at the breadboard, you'll notice that you have this plus and this minus um, running down one side. There's a blue and a red line there, and you have it on the other side as well. These are known as the power buses. And you have an anode, that's the plus, and the cathode, that's the minus. Um, in the uh, breadboard, if you run a wire over to the anode on one power bus and hook it into that first pin, it will actually power that entire strip. You actually have a piece of metal that runs the full length of that uh, power bus underneath the anode as well as the cathode. So a single wire into one port powers that entire strip. And the same thing for the anode that will create a ground for that entire part of that strip as well. You can also jumper if you want a wire from one bus over to the other. Um, usually you think of power flowing from plus to minus, anode to cathode, but when you're jumping a wire to create to power the other bus, you actually want to remember that you're you're trying to create a plus on the other side, an anode on the other side. So you have to go anode to anode, plus to plus uh, when you do that jumper. And same thing with the with the cathode. Um, now the center part here, this is where you do all of your work. This is the prototyping space. And you'll notice that we've got columns A through J, as well as rows 1 through 30 running down, with this gap in the middle. And that's important that you understand, because what we can do is we can run a wire that runs, in this case, from the power bus over to, let's say, uh, A1, and that's going to power this entire strip, A1 through E1. Notice that I didn't say A1 through J1. In order to do that, you would also have to run a jumper wire across that gap. 
Um, so that's a way that you can move power over to the other side. Additionally, if you jumped and have both power buses uh, active, you could run power off of the other uh, power bus to the other side of the board. So you can really set up some rather complex uh, circuits in here. Um, again, it's powering just this strip. So there's a piece of metal. There's a whole bunch of them. In fact, there's 30 pieces of metal that run across this one side and 30 over here for a total of 60 strips of metal um, running in this direction all the way across. And that creates your prototyping area on your breadboard. So here are the two side by side, and uh, in your first activity, you are asked to run a ground wire, and, and you could run it from either of the grounds. Uh, I don't remember in your example exactly where they ran it from, so for the sake of uh, brevity, I'm going to run it from this ground wire over here all the way over to that anode on the bus. And then uh, I also believe you are asked to run a wire from the 5 volt all the way over to the power that bus. So right now this entire bus is powered. It's not doing anything. It allows us, gives us a place to be able to run power out into our prototyping space. Additionally, you are asked to take another wire and plug it into uh, port 13. And I'm going to go ahead and run that out to, uh, let's say, A2. Um, and then I believe you were asked to put a LED in. So I'll just uh, put a, a line like this to represent two uh, pins, one going in B2 uh, and the other one into uh, B3. And then finally you were asked to run a wire back. In this case it was a resistor and it had to run from here somewhere back to this bus and I'll just draw a little resistor on there. So that was uh, really completed the circuit. So with that, uh, you that was your kind of your starting point for all all of your experimentation. Um, you should have noticed uh, when you were running this that there's a little light right here that was flashing at the same rate once you got this working at the same rate that this LED was flashing. That's because actually port 13 also plugs in this little LED that's right here on the Arduino board. And uh, so actually your program would have run without any circuitry whatsoever. Um, it would have just been flashing this one board right here. Uh, but you went ahead and you were supposed to get it to work over on the prototyping board. And so this was kind of your starting point. Um, there's some surprises in here and some things that you should have noticed when you were playing with this. So uh, we'll point those out a little bit later. Finally, I want to take a quick look at the LEDs themselves. LED is a light-emitting diode. A diode is a very specific type of uh, circuitry, uh, electric component, that allows electricity to flow only in one direction. If a diode is placed in backwards, it actually won't work. Um, so the, here are uh, several different types. You know, Here's a diode that doesn't emit light. These are two that do emit light. These are here you got a yellow diode and a red diode. And this one with the four pins in it is really a cool one. And you'll get to play with this a bit later. This is a light emitting diode, but it's an RGB, red, green, blue. And so what you have on a diode, you notice that uh, one uh, wire is longer than the other. And that longer wire is your anode. And the shorter wire represents the cathode. If I can draw a cathode, that would be helpful, um, is the cathode. Um, so both of these, you'll notice, there's our anode and there's our cathode. Now look at the RGB. It's a little bit different. It has four pins on it. And in this case, you've got a pin. Pins are numbered in this case. One uh, is going to be right next to the, the one that's uh, on the outside next to the longest pin. One, two three, and four. Um, pin one is your red, uh, three is going to be your green, and four is your blue. And you can actually color mix these then. And then you must be wondering what is that longer pin all about here. The longer pin in this case happens to be a common cathode. So in, in the, you would refer to this RGB uh, LED 
uh, as a uh, having the common cathode. So that is your negative. And uh, so those are the components that you're working with.